Hey guys, Steve in Utah here. Today I'd like to talk about this backup diesel generator. First thing I'd like to say is I am not a generator expert. Uh, I'm a DIY guy with a background in electronics and electrical engineering. But with that said, there's situations when you gotta get power and you learn a lot about these pretty quick. So I'd like to share with you what I like about the generator and a bunch of the issues we've had with it. Okay, first of all, uh, as mentioned, this is a commercial power ONAM. CMSD 7500. That is 7.5 kVA. So what that means to you is that we'll actually get 240 volts at 30 amps or 120 volts at 60 amps. So quite a bit of power. Uh, the main reason this unit is here is to run our well. Out west here, uh, we're pretty remote and if there's fires or power lines down or heavy storms, they don't get to us right away. And uh, the most things we can get by, no problem. The biggest problem is water. We have uh, quite a few of these um, oh, large quadruped manure makers and uh, our dairy goats over here. And without water, you're gonna get in trouble pretty quick. We've seen this on the fires in California where people literally have to evacuate because they can't get water out of the ground for their stock numbers. So how we set this thing up, as you can see, it's permanently mounted. We simply poured a block, built a stand for it, screwed it down. It is uh, rubber mounted on all four corners. And for fuel management, and that's something that everyone needs to look at with a backup generator, um, is we plumbed it directly into our farm stand tank. And the reason for this is simple. Most of you that might have a backup generator and uh, after two years, you finally need it, you pull it out, you find the gas is bad, it's been jellied or it's out of gas and you don't really have any way of cleaning it all out or getting it going. And when you need it, you need it. So the farm tank is used to fill up the tractor and some of the other equipment we have on the property in the ranch truck. So we're always purchasing bulk, so we have fuel coming and going. And we nurse off this thing, then replenish it, nurse off it, replenish it. So the fuel doesn't sit for long periods of time. So we simply just plumbed it in here with a valve on the bottom there. And uh, whenever we need to, we can just simply run the uh, electric pump and it'll circulate the fuel, circulate the old fuel out of the line and bring new fuel in. So it's a good way to manage the fuel. The other ways you can get around it, of course, is hook them directly into your propane tank. If you have a very large propane tank and a propane uh, backed up generator is a good way to go because uh, the um, uh, propane doesn't go bad. It doesn't have a shelf life to it. It doesn't need stabilized, but it can run your tank down pretty quick and they can get pretty expensive if you don't have a facility of a large tank. So the uh, engine itself is a Kubota. It's a three cylinder diesel. It's the D1105. It's about 14 horsepower and uh, it's an excellent engine. We've had very little issue with it. Uh, the thermostat actually uh, did lock up on us one time. But it's just here, two bolts, pulled it out, good to go. No major issues at all with this uh, great little uh, Kubota diesel, as many of the Kubotas are. So most of the problems we had have with the generator are electrical. Uh, it stops making power. Okay, so where do you go look? Uh, a lot of people will tell you right off to go look right here. So this is the power regulator, the voltage regulator. And uh, these things are actually fairly robust. I got one here so I can show you what it looks like. Uh, we did have a chance to pick up a backup one, so we did. So you can see these are heavy potted in resin. Uh, so they're really well protected from the elements. They are molded onto a uh, thermic uh, thermocoupled onto a cooling fin. So it doesn't ever have a real problem with heating. Simply one switch, that's uh, for the hertz, 60 hertz or 50 hertz. So if you put your meter on it and find you're only 50 hertz, it could simply be that switch. So we've had very little problems with this. When it did stop making electricity, we found out the problem was actually the generator brushes. Uh, the generator brushes are a, a single unit in block, and you simply pull these four screws, open it up, and you'll see the access to that. Uh, they're pretty inexpensive, and I got one over here so you can see what they look like. So it's just a, a simple block. We just have this piece of a straw through there to keep them from popping out. So here's the two sprung contactors uh, that go into the armature, and um, two bolts and two wires to hook up, and that was the fix. 
pretty simple. So we keep this one as a backup, as a tester, just in case we have further issues. We're not crazily expensive. This is an Onan part. I'll show you that part right there. Okay, it's the block assembly generator box. The other problem we've had with this unit is this right here. So this right here is all the circuitry for everything coming off the engine, for the water temperature, the oil pressure, uh, all the sensors are fed back into this. And this unit right here is a Woodward solenoid. It is a fuel shutoff solenoid. So if it senses any problems at all, or if there's uh, something that's uh, not right with the circuitry, it's not gonna engage this. In order for this engine to start, it needs to be pulled back so it'll actually has fuel availability. Otherwise, by default, it'll cut off the fuel and stop the engine. So in this unit, they had so many problems with it, they simply put in a bypass. So they wired this directly to 12 volt. Note also that the accessory on this runs directly down to your electric fuel pump here. This is a uh, low pressure pump, but it will circulate the fuel. So whenever we have problems, we can turn the pump on only and let the fuel circulate through so we get fresh fuel. So the reason most of the time that this thing fails to stay contacted is we've got a fault signal or no signal at all. In the oil field, we've seen come up to these generators and someone's got a bungee and just simply pulled this thing back so it'll stay running which uh, that'll get you going and when you're into a situation where you need to get water out of the ground it'll do it but if the engine actually is overheating or has a fault it's not going to shut it down you could damage or destroy it so here's the issue we got it's inside this little box here and uh see so if i can get this off and show you what it looks like wow that is electrician's nightmare and just in case you need it of course here's the handy dandy schematic right inside and uh, Onan was really nice to make every wire black, except for an occasional white wire here. Um, but they have labeled them. They did a good job on every wire of putting out what it is and what it runs to. So inside this box has actually only had a few minor issues. The major issue with it is this connector right here. Um, they brought in um, the battery power into the solenoids and into this unit through this connector. Uh, I, I'm not the design guy, but I noticed there's two battery hots on this and they go to two separate pins. And as this thing moves and that plug wiggles around a little bit, it made and broke, made and broke, started arcing across and started destroying the pins. I think we can demonstrate this. So this is actually the shutoff, but it's also a breaker. So it's internally, we've had problems, this switch falls out all the time. So. Turning it on, okay, I can kind of show you this. I'm going to hold the switch on and wiggle this plug around a little bit, see if I can do this. Okay, you see that? So we're making and breaking in here. So this is the issue a lot of the times, and most people have figured that out. You'll go to some locations, and you'll see people have got so frustrated with it, they just taped it up. The other thing they've done, some people get really desperate and will just uh, eliminate both these plugs and hardwire it through. So the two pins in question, this is a 24 pin setup, okay? But um, only 16 of them are used. But if you look at that pin right there, you can see how burnt it is and how much wider it is. So look at the hole on that one and the hole on that one, comparing those two, you can see. So these are the two power pins and they're probably drawing 15 or 20 amp of power through this light duty setup, and it's just not a good design. So if you look in here at the pin setup on the mounted plug, you'll see these two pins right there. And you can see how heavily corroded they are and how pitted they are from that electricity making and breaking. It's got to the point where this thing is, you really gotta wiggle that thing around and jam things around to get it. So uh, the fix for this is again, just kind of uh, eliminate this panel plug, uh, eliminate this connector, and label all your wires. They're labeled fairly well. And then just butt splice them together and seal it up. That would be the poor man's way of doing it. Or you can try to replace the connector. So let me show you what I uh, teched out, um, talked to this great company, and uh, bought a brand new connector. So this is a Bendix 
okay? 24-7P, A24-7P. And if you'll notice, it's got two large pins specifically made for battery power. This is really the way it should go. So these are rated 15 amp, the outer ones, and these are rated 23 amp, I think. You can look here at the cable end plug itself, and you can see that. It's got these nice, big, beautiful, heavy pins, so we should never have any issue with that. It's also mil-spec. Uh, it locks down the heavily threaded. Uh, had to, uh, the cable pinch had to order that separately, but we're going to go ahead and power it in. But if you look at the two, you can see how much heavier duty and robust this is. So this hopefully will solve the problem in the comments after I get it replaced. I will let you know. But besides that, the generator is excellently regulated. I uh, put my meter on it. I've got a fluke that'll run min-max. Ran it for 30 minutes. I'm getting like seven tenths of a fluctuation and less than one hertz of fluctuation. So for me to hook it up to my $2,000 Grunfoltz pump, deep well pump, I got no problem with it. It really does a great job. Plus also for supplying the household, there's a 50 amp plug in it. It's all being set up so we can actually plug the well into it or just plug it into a 50 amp plug. So. That's uh, been my experience with this, and I hope that helps. Uh, I've searched the internet for help on this, and I don't see anybody talking about this commercial CMSD 7500. That's been my experience with it, and that's the way we set it up. So if uh, this helps you, uh, please go ahead and like my video. Uh, if there's something you see that I've made an error on, just go ahead and make a comment. Some people really love to do that, like my wife. And if not, uh, I hope somewhere down the road this saves you a bunch of legwork and money. Anyway, this is uh, Steve in Utah, and uh, let's be safe out there.